Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Office Hours, Shimmer Office Hours. And uh, today we are going to again divide this into two halves. Uh, for the first 30 minutes, we can talk about setting up Shimmer EVM on uh, MetaMask and uh, deploying a smart contract using Remix, and then you'll use Hardhat and then to verify a smart contract, and we'll see how that works. And then after that, we'll keep up some time for the general office hours Q&A. This call will be recorded, so, and will also be shared, uploaded, and shared by the end of the week. So uh, in case somebody misses out, you can also catch up later. So let's get started. All right. So to get started, uh, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to cover go through the EVM to EVM toolings. All right. And uh, a heads up for anybody who has joined new, uh, there is a problem with the. Feedback loop in the mic. So if you're going to talk, I'm going to do a quick mute so that you can talk and it there won't be any debug. All right, getting back in this. Um, so I think if you have already set up uh, my EVM, uh, then this might be a very common step for you. Uh, but if not, there's a, a tooling section on the wiki to help through setting up of this part. So with for this one, we will not set up any nodes. We'll go with the normal uh, nodes and the, the public node, the RPC and chain ID. And this can be found at a number of places. Um, not in this, this link is actually outdated, but you can go to evm toolkit.evm.testing.shimmer.info, this link, and you will find it here. Switch to this one and uh, right. And if you have your MetaMask and you can just connect it, um, let's try to actually delete our network so we can add it back and see. So when we connect our wallet, it will ask us that you know, if the network is not there, it will detect and it will ask us to add it. We can actually add it from here. Uh, you can also go to the Explorer and there's a similar button over here at the bottom at Shimmer EVM testnet. So you can add it from here as well. So let's try to let's try to add the network from here itself. And once you approve, so we can view all the details. Of course, it's the same JSON RPG URL, the same uh, the name. And if you want to put up like a custom name by yourself, you can um, add it manually. Uh, to add it manually a network, you will have to go here and click on this Add Network, and this will open up. You can add manually and add all the details over here. Uh, you can also find all the details right here on, on, on the network settings. If you have a custom network, then you can just click on custom network and you can add it from here. This have been giving some trouble, so you'll have to make sure that your chain address is also publicly accessible. I think that should fix it, but if it doesn't, then you can use your uh, faucet um, which comes with the wasp for the time being. And if it still is causing issues, feel free to just uh, put the issue on ISC channel on Discord. Now, once your network is added, um, you can request some tokens. I have some tokens already, but you can also request your tokens. You can click on this and it will just copy paste, or you can just copy paste by yourself as well. Uh, this has an additional functionality, which is to withdraw. And we can actually withdraw it to an L1 address. So if you have an L1 address from your Firefly wallet or something, you can put it here. Uh, you can put whatever amount of ship that you want to transfer, and you can withdraw it to your L1 wallet as well. You will get at that many ship tokens on your L1 wallet. So today we're not going to cover the withdraw part. Uh, we'll do it later. Uh, once, we, once you have some tokens, you should be good to go. And uh, we can actually proceed towards, let's say, deploying a smart contract, right? So this is the, the Remix 
this is a this is a Ethereum ID works with uh, most EVM networks, and uh, it's pretty simple to use. So, and it's actually has a good UI. I mean, decent UI. Uh, so we can use it for demonstration. Of course, it's not recommended process. We'll recommend hard add more than this. Uh, but yeah, we, we can sort of carry on with this. Um, if you are looking for this entire tutorial, it's uploaded on the develop on the tutorial section. So you can follow this entire thing, uh, which is right here. And we will also do something similar to this, right? So, which is exactly, we'll do exactly this. There's also a video tutorial here as well, and also on which you can follow. Okay, so let's try to do that. And uh, First of all, a couple of things. If you don't know about the Remix ID, there's a solidity compiler section in which you can set up your compiler versions. Ours is, and this would match the compiler version that you write up, the solidity version that you write up the contract over here. Uh, if you're going to auto compile, that's why the button won't come. But if you don't put any changes that you make after that, you'll have to just do compile. Uh, if you're getting a green tick over here, then it's fine. If you're getting some errors over here, then you need to figure out what errors. For example, some errors can be even this, right? So since uh, I think Solidity version 8 or above, they are asking us to add uh, license information. Uh, if it is licensed, you can add that. If it is open source license like MID or Apache 2.0, then you can add that, those as well. Uh, I just put it unlicensed because well, this is not mine. This is, this is one of the default contracts that you get along with. Uh, along with Remix. So we'll go to this tab, which is deploy and run. Uh, here you can see there's some VMs which is available. So these are the Remix awkward VMs. Uh, these are good for testing, quick testing purposes. But what we need is to do is injected provider, which will inject whatever network that we have selected over here, whatever address we have selected into the MetaMask. So we got, that, we got all that. And now what we have to do is click on deploy. And now I click on deploy, it will pop up and ask us to sort of pay in some gas amount for there. Um, so you need this gas amount, that's why you need to get some tokens to your faucet. It's fairly quick, and we can see that the address is deployed as well. If you want to also look into that into, let's say, the block explorer, you can go to the block explorer, and sometimes the explorer obviously takes some time. So while it loads up and syncs up with our a contract, we can test out the contract. All right, sometimes it takes some time, so no worries. Um, this is a simple smart contract, by the way. Like, there's nothing much to it. There's a simple store function and a retrieve function. Retrieve gets the number and returns us back and store whatever number we pass, it will just store to that variable. And uh, this will also, so any state change uh, function will have the orange ish color and this will have a slightly bluish grayish color and if you have a payable function then it will come in red because you have to pay some amount for that and you can see that there was another transaction that happened all the details you can see over here as well so this was a simple uh, you know deployment of a contract right and the same obviously you can see over here yeah sometimes this takes way too long and which is very irritating but anyway we can move forward for now we'll come back to this later so in the in this tutorial as well you will find similar uh, sort of demonstration of what exactly is happening is simple uh, connecting to metamask and remix and deploying a smart contract and you can also interact with the smart contract right from here right so and if you want to also integrate into your dap we will do that in the next session. Uh, today, we'll just focus on the, the deploying part. And then there's another tutorial, which is to cover for hard hat. So hard hat is another, um, is, is a framework. Like earlier, there used to be Truffle. Uh, then now there's hard hat. If you're, if you're a Python programmer, there's also Brownie, uh, right? Right, it's Brownie. So this is also another framework uh, that you can use to deploy smart contracts to EVM chains. You can use this as well. And uh, there used to be Truffle. 
uh, not the food, but something. But they have a very comprehensive documentation and used to be really, really, really popular. I'm not sure if it's being still used a lot. And now, Hardhead is one of the most uh, popular choices out there. And so we'll try to also deploy it using Hardhead. And Hardhead is very developer friendly as well. Uh, if you are coming from a Node.js background, it makes it incredibly simple uh, to actually deploy it. So let's do that. Done. All right, so it is updated and uh, the transactions are still not created though. We'll see the transactions over here once it comes up. Oh, sorry, this is the transaction hash. Uh, we'll see the contract hash. There should be, yeah, two transactions, right? So one was the contract uh, creation hash and one was the transaction that we did, right? Uh, the view calls doesn't come up as transactions, so they won't show up over here. And if it were, so say, let's say we can also deploy uh, ER320 contracts, right? So we can just go to here and we can say, uh, create a new file. Now, how would you, so you can create easily ER320 contracts using wizard, open submit wizard. It's a very simple tool to actually create your own tokens and deploy it. So let's call it uh, test token. We will give it like TTT maybe, TTK, I don't know. Um, you can pre-mint some tokens. Let's say we want to pre-mint, how much is that? One, one million, one billion. All right, let's go with like one trillion, right? So one trillion tokens we are minting. And then you can add different functions to it. Let's say if you want to make it mintable, if you want to make it burnable, uh, pauseable, and so on, right? If you want to enable votes and so on. Uh, so let's just try a very simple contract, which is this, mintable and burnable. Uh, you can add ownable or roles, so role based. Uh, so if it is only one owner and then this, this is fine. If you want to add multiple roles, so you can have like a mentor role, you can have, let's say, a, a, a separate role and uh, you can add more things to it. But let's just keep it like simple, ownable. Um, it's not as much needed. Now, here you can see the life of the MIT. We we'll just put it as unlicensed. Uh, security contact if you want to add, especially if you're doing it on behalf of an organization, you should have a security contact. We're just playing around, so we don't, so it's fine for us. And that's it. You can just copy to the clipboard and uh, try to create a new file. Let's call it test token.sol. Paste it. Yeah. It just shows an alert if you're pasting code from anywhere because. A lot of places might not be very trustworthy to copy paste your code, right? Uh, all right, so clean this up and we'll try to reply this test token. And uh, right, and the test token is deployed, and we have a ERC20 token now. Now you'll see that you know a lot not a lot of functions we wrote over here we have over here but there's a lot of functions that is coming up just because we have imported these packages so open open Zeppelin has created these packages for easy creation of our smart contracts so we don't have to worry too much and we'll get a lot of these uh over and yeah so because we didn't specify any decimal units it takes the decimals which is by default 18 decimals uh, if you want uh, to configure that, uh, you'll have to override the decimal function and add it over here. Uh, but yeah, let's try to see if uh, this has synced up and uh, we can actually see this contract on the Explorer. Uh, while it does that, let's load it up. Let's go back and uh, so this is how and you can also create, you know, your own ERG721, your total DEL5, um, your governance uh, contract are something custom, right? So feel free to play around this a very, very interesting uh, visit. So we'll try to go ahead with uh, hard hat now. Okay, so a couple of steps, like first uh, you have to create an empty project, then you have to run initiated NPM. So let's try to do that. Uh, let's call it hard hat test. And 
will run an init. Then we'll have to install harder. All right, while it installs, uh, then we run npx harder. And this will essentially run a widget which allows us to generate the harder uh, code. And this would be something like a pre generated code base. Uh, if you want to not have pre generated code base, you can also do that. So you can see some of the files are already here. I'm using VS Code. You're free, free to use any other code that you prefer. So let's do that. Uh, now, if you're more proficient in TypeScript, you can choose TypeScript. Or if you want just an empty hard hat project, you can just click on this. And let's get ahead with uh, JavaScript. And uh, just to yeah install whatever is necessary. And so that it install it should create something like that, right? Uh, we will have a contract already, so we'll come back to this. This is important, but let's just see generate it first. So now you see a lot of uh, you know uh, folders are here already. Uh, we have hardware as a dev dependency and uh, the hardware.com file. So this is installing additional uh, dependencies that we will need. Hardware toolbox, toolbox is needed for um, compiling the contract, right? And yep, the project is created. It says uh, there are some vulnerabilities in some of the packages. It's happening with NPM packages. Don't worry too much about those. And this hardware config file, right? This signifies the solidity version in which uh, things will keep getting compiled. The contracts will have, let's say, uh, you can have all the contracts, your contracts over here. There's a sample contract over here, which is a log contract. Um, this will essentially allow you to lock your funds at uh, for a certain amount of time, right? And that's what this contract is. And we will have to specify that in this unlock time, and that's it. Uh, you can replace it with your own contract. And in the scripts, you'll find a deploy script, which will describe about deploying this contract so instead of lock, if you have some other contract name, you can replace it with that. Um, this contract requires it to have passing to have a value passed in as a, in the constructor. Your contract might not, so you can replace this part if you are using some other contract. And once it is deployed, we'll get the timestamp and the amount, the the address, right? So these two things that we need. Um, and then there's a test, which is to test uh, the contract. So the different functions. Uh, it's very useful to have tests. Uh, these things are not there on Remix, or you'll have to write separate scripts on Remix uh, for this. Uh, and hardware, it's a little easier because it's on your local system. Now, what we need to do is add our network to this, because by default, this will not have the Shima EVM network. So to do that, uh, all we need to do is just copy this part and just go and replace this section. So now what it defines is that we had we have defined a default network, which should be also defined over here. So show my EVM testnet with its URL, which is a JSON RPC, uh, chain ID, and a private key. Now we need a private key right here. Uh, for this, uh, you can either have your private key exported. So for example, I can just go over here and from your account details, you can export your private key. And once you do this, um, you'll have to enter your MetaMask password and then export it. Um, I'll do this off screen, but once you enter your MetaMask password, your private key will just pop up on the screen and you can just copy it and you can paste it. So give me a couple of seconds and I'll do that. It's still revolving, okay. Uh, in the meantime, if there is any questions, feel free to ask. Let me just get the set up the private key thing.
I'm guessing no questions. I'm guessing no questions yet. So let's carry on. Uh, so what I have done um, right now is I have added a .env file which looks something like this and I've added a private key and inside that you can paste your private key. Uh, now by default, this will not be read right from a local program. So we will need something like a .env. Um, I have defined that over here as well. Yeah, you can really do that. And uh, yeah. Once you've defined it, uh, yes, you can use a .env npm package. Uh, so we need to add this as well to our project. And uh, this will allow us to read from the project.env file and we can read So from here, I'll just replace it with, let's say, right? And this should read my private key from .env now. Now, you should not push .env to your uh, project whenever you want. So let's say, we'll just add it to uh, get ignore. Uh, of course, we are not going to push this project right now, um, but if you do, just be careful not to push your uh, private keys onto our Git repository. Okay, going back to this one, uh, yeah, there's a detailed explanation over here as well of how you can export it. And uh, once you're done, um, yeah, you can obviously run npx pilot compile. This would compile the project first. Uh, to compile the project, of course, we didn't need to install the or add the network, but let's try to compile it. All right, so once it is compiled, you'll see that there's an artifacts and then there's a bunch of other things over here. So you'll see a log.json file in which you will find the ABI, uh, the bytecode and other details. The ABI is just, you know, what all functions it is, it has so that uh, when we call the function from our front end, we'll need the ABI and we can call using that. Uh, we, ideally, we won't need it and then there's some cache files, which again, we don't need to look at too much. All right, so once we're done with that, we can just deploy it using this. So we already had a scripts.deploy file, right? Now all we did is add the network and explicitly define that. Even if you don't do this network part, because we have defined here over here as a default network, it should be fine. But uh, if you have not defined as a default network, you have multiple networks that you're working with, let's say Shima EVM testnet, tomorrow you have Shima EVM, um, or other Goerli network or, or Sepolia network and so on, then you can do that. All right, so we have deployed it with, let's say this one, with this much of gas fee and with the timestamp and deployed to this address. Uh, now we can just take this address and go back to our Explorer, which is somehow, something is wrong with this. I don't know what is happening. Okay, so this might not be synced yet, but once it is synced, we'll start uh, looking at the seeing this. Uh, oh, this is already deployed. All right, so this contract is actually deployed, um, but it, doesn't have anything, right? And uh, it's still loading for some reason. Yeah, okay, I don't know. We'll come back and see, to see that later. Okay, so let's open this contract part again. So at this point, it's just a contract address is deployed, right? And there's nothing much to it. Now, we can also verify the contract so that if somebody wants, you can also interact with it from the uh, Explorer itself. Right? So for that, we need to add this part in our hardware config.js, right? And we, have, we can add that part below networks. Uh, it needs an API key, uh, just add anything in random. Uh, we, the, Shima, the current explorer doesn't have an API key, but uh, it needs API key, hard app needs it, so we need to provide something. Uh, the API URL is the explorer, the explorer API URL and the browser URL from, for the explorer in the browser. 
uh, network that we are using is from here the reference point and chain id these are all the configurations you will need and then we can just add this part which is to verify the contract uh, there's also video tutorial available here as well for later if you want to catch up on that now uh, here we, we need to add two things one is address and one is unlock time so the address we can add is this address and the unlock time we can add is the sum of time and uh, once you do that it will sort of verify the contract and will then we will start seeing the code on the explorer as well uh, this might fail sometimes or might pass depending on either network or 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 the, or the or the network connection or the remote network both and uh, might take a couple of seconds uh, it's currently waiting for verification result so do it at a time when you're when you're sure that currently as you know the explorer is uh has improved significantly of course but there's still improvements to be done um, so do it at a time when you know the Explorer is up and running. So it is a, at least the first contract part is synced and we can see that the contract creation transaction is coming up here. Uh, sometimes also it gets stuck, so you just need to kill it and rerun it. Um, and let's try to just get it and rerun it. So this is all. By the way, like after this step, we our contract will be verified and you know ready to use, ready to take a look at. So feel free to try these things out and let us know if you face any issues. Um, and uh, if there's any issues, there's always the ADM channel that you can come back and post it and take a look. Uh, all right, so this transaction, I think it's, it's already up, but it's... Ah, okay, so the token is at least up, right? And you can see the token uh, contract page. So currently there's no holders, or at least just one holder. Um, so I can sort of send tokens to anybody over here as well, if you want. I'll share your address and I can send it. Now there is some functions over here, right, that we can make use of. What is the mint function? As you can see, so we have added a mint table. Uh, so we have added a mint function to our token contract, right? So we can mint as many tokens as you want and keep sending them. Yes, this will verify. But I'll take a pause for now because taken enough time in the setting up of the mic and all that so we don't have much time left for questions part so we'll let it run and it will sort of help more hopefully very get verified uh, at a later point but if we have is if we have any questions uh, or either related to this or or anything else around shima yashima idiom uh, feel free to ask and uh, we can get started there Anybody want to kick off with the uh, questions?
I guess not. Okay. Then we can sort of play around. This is taking way too much time, longer time, right? Try to redo it. And do let us know what other content or tutorials would you like to understand or go through um, to understand more on Shamai VM and how to use it. Would love to gather them together. By the way, do look into Hard uh, uh, more because it's an excellent tool and uh, uh, it has all the necessary documentation that you need to get started. It will explain all the contract part and everything. Uh, from setting up and verifying your contracts, get up from here. Okay, so here they are deploying it to Sephora basically. Okay, usually it takes like a couple of seconds and it gets over, but it's stuck somewhere. Okay, so no questions. Um, doesn't have to be from Shima EVM, it can be from anything else as well. From Shima. If nothing else, then yes, thank you for joining. And uh, next session, we will cover mostly on uh, the DAP side, where we'll try to integrate a smart contract into our DAP using Ethos.js. You can also use Web3.js, but I would prefer Ethos.js. And we'll try to call a, our contract from our DAP. So try to do that.
Okay, then I'll stop the recording here. The last 10 minutes, if there is something off, records.